Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. We're going to do something a bit different in this video. I'm going to talk about how you could reverse engineer a portrait. Now, if you're a budding portrait photographer and you're just learning, you could really glean a lot by looking at other photographers' images and reverse engineering them. With reverse engineering, you could pretty much figure out what type of light they used, whether or not they used a softbox or a beauty dish, whether that softbox was octagonal or square, where they had it placed, whether they had background lights, and so on. Now, if this is something you want me to explore further in more videos, let me know in the comments below. And if there's a specific image you want me to reverse engineer, let me know also in the comments below. We're going to start out with a very famous image by a very famous photographer of a very famous model. This, of course, is Twiggy. She was often referred to as the first supermodel. This was taken in the 1960s by Richard Avedon. Richard Avedon is super famous. And the interesting thing I think about him is most often he used very simple setups, very simple lighting, very simple backgrounds. Most often the background was nothing more than seamless paper that was usually white or gray. And you could see that in this image, that's what we have. Now, as we look at it, when you want to reverse engineer something, what I recommend you do first is zoom in and look at the person's eyes. And when we zoom in on Twiggy's eyes, you can see that there's a catch light there. And that catch light is slightly to camera left and it's relatively high. Also, you could see it's really very small. Uh, looking at that, I could know or derive that it really was an unfiltered light source. There wasn't a diffuser on this. He probably just used a strobe with a seven and a half, eight and a half inch, maybe even up to a ten and a half inch reflector, and he just blasted that light right on her face. And kind of what backs that up, if I zoom back out, is if you look at the shadows and the bright parts of her face, you can see her forehead is the brightest part of her face. So that light is camera left. It's relatively high. It's mainly hitting her forehead, but it is going down all the way to her chin as well. But the shadows, very uh, dramatic, a sharp edge on the shadows, and the shadows are really dark. So you could see on her left cheek, shadows really dark. The shadow of her chin being cast on her neck, very, very dark. He did not use any type of diffuser on this light. He just lit it very simply. High camera left, shot down on her slightly, came up with this really dramatic image. Now, as far as the background, I mentioned that he was kind of known for using seamless paper. He just has seamless paper here. It's evenly lit, so he probably had a couple lights on the background, and he didn't want it to go absolute white, so he had them their power down on those a little bit so that it came out gray, and you came up with this very notable image of Twiggy. So very simple uh, setup, something I know that if many of you starting out in photography, you just spent a bazillion dollars on a camera and lens, you may not have a lot of money left over for a lot of lighting. Well, this could get you started. Just get a light. Now you'll have to deal with the background, you know, until you could afford two more lights. But just get a, a even a flash and put it off camera and you could experiment and do some, um, get some great images with it. Now let's go on to the second image. The second image is by the photographer William Coupon or Coupon. That's the age old question. Coupon or Coupon. Um, I actually just yesterday bought the book that this image is in. I'll have a link to that book in the description below this uh, video. It's a super expensive book though. But um, I bring that up only because as you look at all the images I'm going to show you today, there, you'll see a lot of compression artifacts and they're not very resolute. That's because they're just images I found on the internet and downloaded. Uh, the image in the book is super sharp. Uh, you could see every pore on Neil Young's face, on his cheek. Um, here, not so much. So I want you to take that in consideration. Actually take that in consideration when you're reverse engineering images that you do find on the internet. Now this, although it looks totally different than the Twiggy image, it's, it's similar in a way in that he's using a single light on the subject. Neil Young, of course, isn't facing the camera directly. He's facing to his right. You can see that the, if we zoom in on his face, you can see that there's a larger catch light in his eye. It looks like it's square, maybe rectangular. So he's using a soft box. Um, it's way further to camera left compared to the other one. And it's lower than the one that was on Twiggy, which was more just to camera left and higher. 
And it's lower, he's got a hat on, so there's no shadow being cast by the hat. And having it a little bit lower is getting the light on his forehead. Also, because it's a softbox, it's kind of spreading that light out a little more and softening it so that there isn't any harsh shadow caused by that brim of the cap or hat on his head. So it is a single light with a large softbox off to camera left. Now, if we look at the shadows, it is a rather dramatic shadow uh, going off his left cheek to the side of his face. The, cam the guitar has a little bit of a light on this edge, uh, and then it gets real dark over here. So it might make you kind of think that it isn't a softbox necessarily, that it's more of a harsher light, but it isn't. What it is, is he took the softbox to camera left and he pushed it more towards the background. So just the edge of the softbox was the light from the edge of the softbox. The front edge of the softbox was hitting Neil Young in the face and it's being feathered off towards the guitar so that you have this, you know, everything else back there going into shadow. Also, you could tell that if you look at the background, the background is lit more in the left than it is on the right. I think he used a single light with a larger square softbox pushed towards that background to have most of the light hit the background and light the background and just feather the light on Neil Young's face like it is here. So very, again, simple setup. The background helps in that it's a painted background with a natural vignette painted into it. So the center of the background is lighter than the outside of the background. And having that light feather it like it is or hit it like it is, it kind of contributes to that look as well. So again, a, a very simple image. Uh, this is ectochrome film, by the way. It's um, medium format, probably 120 or 220 camera, you know, 220 film in a medium format camera. I don't know what types of cameras um, William Coupon or Coupon uses, uh, but medium format is probably a Hasselblad. Uh, so, you know, super great. Im I mean, a really great image in my mind. So this next one is, of course, of the champ Muhammad Ali. And this is taken by Annie Leibowitz. Now, Annie Leibowitz is kind of known for like a lot of like both ends of the spectrum. Let's put it that way. Like she could be have very simple lighting setups and very simple sets like Richard Avedon. Or she could get really very complex uh, with multiple lights and reflectors and things like that to light her images. This image is a little bit more in the middle. Now, again, we're going to zoom in and we're going to look first at the catch light in the champ's eyes. And you can see it's like kind of big and long and rectangular. It almost looks like it could be a window, but it, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm sure it's not a window. Um, Annie Leibowitz is known for using light panels too. And I believe this is a light panel, a very large light panel that is behind her. And how I know it's behind her is you could see her in the image. You could see her standing there. Uh, uh, here silhouette in front of the light panel taking this shot. Now, as you look at the light panel, it's to camera right and behind the camera. So it's to the right of the camera. And if we zoom back out, you could see by looking at the lighting on the champ's face, that's indicating that his left cheek is brighter than his right cheek. You could see even the lighting going across the bridge of his nose is shifted to camera right a little bit. So that light box is shifted to the right, obviously by the reflection. And because it's a big light panel, it's a softer light than like that smaller light source that Richard Avedon used on Twiggy. So you don't have harsh shadows going off to the side of his face. Now, they set it up so that his hoodie, the hood, is more open on the lighting side so the light could hit his ear over here. But it's more forward on his face so you do get a nice shadow over here on this side so you, it gives a lot of depth and sculpture to his face so it's very clever lighting done with a very clever uh wardrobe kind of setup so it's done very very well so it's a it's a really great image then if you look at the background the background is kind of opposite of what that is if you look it's brighter on the left and darker on the right. And that's kind of like background lighting 101, something you learn very early on, is you just kind of 
have the background be opposite of what the main light is. So she's lighting uh, the left side of the subject's face, and then the she's writing the right side behind the subject. I kind of clumsily said that. She's lighting camera right on the subject. She's lighting camera left on the background. That's a better way to put it. And um, it's a natural kind of graduated light. So it's just a single light over here behind the champ, hitting that background, um, just natural graduation of light. And similarly on his face with that light panel being offset to the far right, it's a naturally soft light because it's so large and it's graduated going right to left. So really an awesome image. Next is a super famous image of Kurt Cobain. This was taken by uh, the photographer Mark Seliger. Uh, Seliger, I should say. Now just looking at it, um, and I'm not 100% because I didn't read anything on this, but I'm pretty sure he used a large format camera. And large format could be a 4x5, 5x7, or an 8x10. Now most often for portraiture, people use a 4x5 or an 8x10, a large format camera. I think this is a 4x5 only because... If it was an 8x10, it would be more resolute. We'd see every single pore, every single tiny like peach fuzz hair on his nose. You'd actually see that probably with the 8x10. Now, it is a download from the internet, so it's not going to be as resolute. But I'm, I suspect it's a, a 4x5 large format camera. And the reason why I say that is if you look at the area that's in focus, of course, his eye that's closest, his right eye closest to the camera is in focus. Tip of his nose is in focus, cheek in focus. So you kind of got this area in focus, and, and focus drops off dramatically going to each side of the nose over here in this side of his face. And you could say, well, Anthony, he could be using a 1.2 lens, 1.4 lens shooting wide open. The reason why I don't think that's the case and that he's using a large format camera is it's really a plane of focus. If you look very carefully, you could see how that it's, it's in focus, like at this edge, going towards the middle and then it drops off uh, dramatically. Same thing over here. It's like in focus and drops off dramatically and there's like a, a plane going diagonally from the top right corner to the bottom left corner, offset a little bit, um, giving that plane of focus. And you could achieve that with a large format camera because those lenses on those cameras tilt and shift. So he tilted and shifted that lens. So you have this kind of slightly diagonal plane of focus. Uh, portrait photographers will often do that. If you look up the work of the photographer Gregory, Gregory Heisler, he almost always did it on his portraits. And I think he has more Time magazine covers than any other photographer there is. I should have put a Gregory, Gregory Heisler image in here. But that is why I think this is a medium format camera because he has this diagonal plane of focus. Now, if we zoom in on Kurt Cobain's face a little bit, look at that um, reflection. It's similar to the Avedon reflection on Twiggy. It's camera left, it's high. It's larger though, and it's probably a diffused softbox or a, um, a beauty dish, um, one or the other. I suspect it's probably either a very small, a relatively small softbox or a beauty dish, like 22 inch beauty dish. And what makes me say that, and why I don't think it's like Richard Avedon's just using you know, an eight and a half inch reflector with no diffusion at all, is that the shadow on the side of Kurt Cobain's face that is away from the light, the shadows are, are not as dark as those twiggy shadows. They're more diffused. So you have the softer shadows over here. So I'm pretty sure that's a, probably a beauty dish or maybe a small... 30 inch softbox at, at most round uh, to camera left, relatively high, shooting down, hitting mainly his nose and his forehead and lighting his eye, casting soft shadows on the other side. The background, again, is kind of lit opposite. You have um, a light over here on the far right of the background, and it looks like it's down lower shooting up. And um, it could be just shooting diagonally right or evenly right to left. But either way, the right side of the background is lit brighter than the left side of the background. You can see how dark the background is over here, how light it is over here. So again, kind of opposite lighting again, where you have the main light on the subject being on one side and then the main light on the background being on the other side. 
So it's just a really great image. Of course, Kurt Cobain's making the image with just his blank stare at the camera, uh, almost with contempt. So that, of course, always adds to the portrait. I mean, if you didn't have a great subject, you won't often get a great portrait, no matter how well you do the lighting or how well you, you know, configure your camera to capture it. So that's it for this uh, video. Um, if this, again, is something you'd like me to see or to do more in the future, just let me know in the comments below. If there's a specific image you would like me to reverse engineer, let me know in the comments below as well. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.